Being a startup founder is hard and fundraising is even harder. Now with everything that needs to get done, prepping for investor questions may not exactly be a priority on your fundraising to-do list. So in this video, we're gonna help you prep for your next big pitch meeting by showing you the 12 most common investor questions and how to answer them. What's up, founders? This is Keen from storypitchdex.com, where we help founders 40x their chances of getting funded. Now, for most, the mere thought of being put on the spot in a high-pressure meeting makes their head explode. But like it or not, founders need to become confident public speakers when pitching. The secret to nailing a tricky investor question is simple. Rehearse. A lot. Investors grill founders on nearly every business element to test founder expertise and knowledge during a meeting. While founders, founders can't please everyone, they can practice answering common investor questions. What exactly are those questions? Let's jump in. So we spent months analyzing hundreds of investor questions we found online and distilled them down into a definitive guide that we call the Founders Cipher. Now this video will cover the most popular questions from 12 categories. And in the end, I'll tell you a little bit more about how you can get the guide and where you can pick up a copy. So let's go ahead and jump in. Our first question is from the team category. This is the most common question that we saw. And basically it's pretty simple. What experience do you have in this industry? It makes sense, right? Investors do want to work with the best of the best. And in particular, they have a really interesting saying, bet on the jockey, not the horse, which basically means great companies are built by great employees, great people, great staff, great leaders, not necessarily the other way around. Just because you have a great idea, just because you have a great business model, none of that really matters nearly as much as having great experience and a proven track record to be able to really nail stuff. People really want to know, investors really want to know, what experience do you have in this industry? Now, this could be years of experience. This could be key employers. This could be significant accomplishments. You're going to want to kind of humble brag when you answer this. And you're also going to want to have a really nice short pitch about both yourself and your team nailed down before you go in and actually start tackling this question. Now, next up, our second most common question is on use of funds. How will these funds be allocated? Now, a lot of times founders kind of overlook this one. You're going to go raise millions of dollars. You got to have a plan on how you're going to spend it. But basically what this means is you need to have a, a very clear answer for how the funds will be allocated. So if you're raising $5 million or $2 million, how much of that funding will go to product development versus marketing and sales versus overhead? And a lot of times investors are gonna to wanna to see the funding going into growth. They want revenue to be pumped up so they can get those valuations up so they can have a higher multiple on their investment. So that's our second question on use of funds. Let's talk about competition now. This is our third question here. What are your strengths and advantages over the competition. Now here you can also think of this as your unique selling proposition, but there's a, a number of different ways to answer this. It, it sometimes does boil down to being able to say what you do better than your competitors. I'll tell you the answer of we have this one little feature that's slightly better isn't usually the best way to frame things. Look at the full package. Do you have a pricing model difference? It could be the business operations. It could be technology. It could be team. It could be marketing. It could be branding, supply chain, you name it. There's a number of ways that you can answer this. All right, next up, question number four. Who exactly is your best customer? This varies depending on whether or not the company is pre-launch, post-launch, having a defined target. Right? It could be IT directors at enterprise companies over 10,000 people. If your market is too broad, you're selling to no one and you've prepared a solution that likely no one has a problem for. The best answers to this question use data and it also is best if it's answered succinctly. Question number five, this is in the opportunity category, also known as market sizing. Really classic question, what is the TAM, SAM, and SOM? TAM, SAM, SOM is a pretty ubiquitous acronym in pitch decks. It does stand for three different things. Total addressable market, serviceable addressable market, and then serviceable obtainable 
market. And that's basically the, the revenue that you'll be able to expect to capture after you go through each of those layers. So TAM is gonna be your biggest market. The SAM is gonna be a little bit smaller. And then the SOM is maybe X percent of that. And that gets you to that full kind of picture of, of the market opportunity. Next up, the sixth most common question that we saw, what big problem does the startup solve? And here, it's really important to use data to talk about the size of the problem. So the word big has twofold meanings here. The first one is big as in a large quantity of people, right? A lot of people have this problem or many organizations have this problem. But then big as also in severity or depth, the more you can get both of those things, the better. And having data to back this up is always great. 55% of large enterprises have this problem. Now, of note, if you don't have data, go get it. Go out and do the research, do the survey, find the McKinsey report, go grab the problem. And, and really tell the story with data. Question number seven, solution. This question is very direct. Why would anyone want this? And once you look past the pretty harsh phrasing of the question, it's a really good question. Usually the best way to answer this is by tying it to the benefit statement. And the benefit statement is the opposite of a problem or the, the act of solving a problem. So for instance, if a problem is a low conversion rate, saying the opposite of that problem a higher conversion rate or increasing conversion rates or boosting conversion rates by double or 10xing conversion rates, all of those are benefit statements you can think of, right? They're just the opposite of a problem. Having those little benefit statements down is literally why someone would want this. But it's really just the, the act of solving a problem. So that's the best way to answer this question here. Why would anyone want this? Always answer with the benefit statement. Okay. What milestones have you met? But the big one here is showing, showing what has the business been able to achieve in the timeline that it has been in existence for. For instance, pre-launch, you're probably all about demonstrating lots of progress. For post-launch, it's really about choosing what data you have to be able to highlight a product market fit. Typically for companies that are post-launch and you're highlighting a product market fit, it's things like revenue, revenue growth, customer lifetime value, churn rates, showing that you're building that progress is gonna be the main thing in answering this question. Question number nine, product. What is the next step in product evolution? So obviously products don't just launch and that's it. Evolve or die, sink or swim type of thing, right? Sharks that don't swim, die. The same is true in business, obviously, and you wanna make sure that you're showing that you've got plans to evolve and grow, and that could mean short-term and long-term. The way I like to talk about this is making sure that you have focus. Focus in the short-term on an initial market, an initial problem, and an initial solution, and an initial feature set. And then from then on out, after you nail that core group, you can then expand into kind of a, a bigger long-term vision. So. The best way to answer this question, in my opinion, is always by using kind of that short-term, long-term lens. We're getting close to the end here. Business model, question 10, how are you making money include pricing? And what's really interesting to me is I have a lot of founders who have a hard time answering this question. And this should probably be one of the first questions you're tackling if you are starting a company. What do you offer and how much does it cost? basic stuff. I don't care if it's super advanced data science. You still need to know what it is and how much you're going to charge for it. Understanding what is it and how much does it cost and having clear answers to that is absolutely required. You can say things like, oh, we're still trying to figure out the pricing, but for now it's ABC or, you know, it's, it's one, two, three dollars, right? However much that costs. And most importantly, having some focus. Now I mentioned focus on the last slide. The same thing is true with the business model question here on how you're making money and including pricing. In the beginning, one revenue stream. How are you making money include pricing? It's very straightforward. What are you selling and how much does it cost? Question number 11, financials. Now this question is interesting. We're actually doing some research on this right now. So depending on when you watch this video, that research may or may not be live on our website at storypitchdex.com. This question is important. Realistic is super subjective. Is $100 million in your first year realistic? A lot of people will say no. Another way to think about realistic versus interesting is can a company scale to a million dollars in revenue 
with $100,000 in investment. Probably, you can, if you have a scalable product and it's digital, you can probably get there. If you put in $100,000 into marketing, you could probably get a million out or 100,000 to, to hire a salesperson. On the flip side, if you want to scale to 100 million with only a million in, in investment, which is 100X ROI, that's probably less reasonable. Where can you go and how much is it gonna take to get there? Last question, how will you defend proprietary intellectual property. Now, IP is something that, that investors love and legally protected IP, such as patents, investors love it even more because it means that you now have a legally defensible way of protecting your product or service. What do you own that's proprietary and how will you defend it or how is it legally defensible? Now, if you Obviously, if you have patents pending, talk about them. If you have patents granted, even better, show the patent numbers. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, the 12 most common investor questions you can start practicing how to answer today. If you are interested in the complete 53-page guide that covers over 135 questions, you can pick up a copy at stry.pro forward slash cipher. I'll also put the link down below, whether it's in the notes or the comments, so check that out. And as always, if you're interested in following along for more Pitch Dex insights, boop on that subscribe button or follow along at storypitchdex.com. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your raise.